Here comes India's first assignment in the Super 8s as the stakes are now raised and it looks like an Indian team that is up for it against an Afghanistan team that can put that West Indies loss behind them. They are a serious threat. They've made it here ahead of New Zealand. So let's look ahead to that Super 8 fixture. The Kensington Oval in Barbados on Maruti Suzuki Arena presents ESPN Cricket for Timeout powered by Dish TV watcher Anil Kumble with me and we will also have the pleasure of Andy Flas' thoughts ahead of this game. Let's start with the venue. India moved to the Caribbean. They yeah. play at Barbados, which, quite frankly, I don't know what to make of, Anil. So, what are the things India need to keep in mind as we know what they can expect against Afghanistan? One thing is for sure, the batters will certainly sigh a, <laughs> a bit of relief because uh, yeah, the, it's been challenging in New York for the, all the batters. So, uh, uh, Barbados should be a better surface for you to go there and uh, get some runs as a batting unit. Uh, it, it's, it's not a big ground, so uh, Afghanistan is a dangerous side. You can't certainly take them lightly. Uh, they have some serious batting power and also bowlers. I mean, bowlers, if there's a bit of turn, which mm. we saw there was, it's a day game, so there won't be much due at all. There won't be any due, so, you know, the spinners will come in handy. And Afghanistan certainly have a potent attack, uh, so India can't take them lightly. What are the challenges, Andy Fla, for a bunch of batters who've had such difficult conditions to now move to the Caribbean and try and figure out what good scores are or how to set the pace of a game at a venue where we've got a complete mix bag as well as Barbados has shown this tournament so far? Yeah, hi Ronak uh, and Anil, uh, great to be here with you. Yeah, um, thanks, Dan. I think it's nice to see you. The I think the conditions um, that everyone experienced in America really challenged people um, in, in their ability to adapt and think clearly and evaluate a, a useful game plan in very particular conditions. And uh, New York especially is very strong. I, I think that the challenge to move to better surfaces is not a huge one to overcome. Uh, the Indian team will have, uh, they very recently played in the IPL, on which the surfaces were generally outstanding. And uh, as Anil said earlier, uh, they will be relishing the prospect of getting onto a better surface. And I think we've seen, um, we've seen certainly Vira up front be very aggressive. Mm. I know he hasn't come off yet, that's going to happen. And uh, so I, I think that inherent attacking instinct will come out of them. All right, let's just have a look at what Barbados has dished out so far. A super over with 109 each for Namibia and Oman. Scotland got 90 in a rain-affected washout against England in 10 overs. Australia got 200 plus that England then lost their way chasing with 160. And Australia and Oman then, they were made to work hard with the Aussies. They got 160. Namibia and Scotland then we saw again a 155 uh, target chase down. So that's what we've got the evidence so far. And that's why there's a run rate of just around 7.5 at by Bridgetown in this tournament. Uh, but as we break down pace and spin, certainly more for the spinners to do here than in the US. In New York, we only saw 20% uh, of spin. And in, Bar in Barbados, it's almost double. You see more impact for the spinners. Adam Zampa has done well here. So simply put, Anil Kumble, is this time for India to enter Kuldeep Yadav? <laughs> yeah, I think you know, Kuldeep certainly will be in the thoughts of the management. Uh, yeah, let's, let's be honest. It's the super aids you want. Uh, we have seen in, in the Caribbean there's been some assistance to spin and Kuldeep is someone who's a match winner and you would want him in your lineup. Uh, how will you accommodate Kuldeep? Uh, I'm not sure if India will be looking to drop one all-rounder for Kuldeep, hmm. which is either Jadeja or Akshay Patel. Unlikely. The only option for them, in my view, would be to drop a pacer and then bring Kuldeep in because if you're going with eight batters, which, what, which is what India will be comfortable with, having that option of a batter at number eight, whether it's Akshar or Jadeja, uh, I don't see them taking the route of uh, one more spinner coming in place of another spinner. Right, so it'll be uh, three so it'll be a Siraj. Then. I mean, mm. uh, if, you, if you look at the combination, more likely that it'll be a Siraj versus Kuldeep than anyone else. They could have played New Zealand here, Andy, but they now play Afghanistan over on there, right? If you look at the opposition, is three spinners too many? Would you be tempted to think because the opposition is Afghanistan, we could stick with the same balance as worked for us in, uh, in the US? Yeah, it's a really good discussion and I think Anil has gone over the merits of the, the various decisions there uh, very well. 
Uh, Cole Deep's career stats, 34 games, 59 wickets, and an economy of 6.7. I mean, those are outstanding stats. And he's just come off a very uh, dominant, successful IPL season as well. So uh, there's, a, there's a really good argument for playing him. I tend to agree with Anil that looking at how the, the Indian management seem to be making their selection decisions at the moment, they are reticent to, uh, to leave out Axel, who's uh, one of eight batsmen, and shortening their batting to seven doesn't seem like something they want to do. So it means, I think, that Siraj becomes uh, the, the guy to leave out if they want to bring Paul Deep in. And I think that decision is dependent on conditions. So it's one thing looking at the stats um, and, and seeing historically uh, what's been happening, even very recently at that venue. But I think once they walk onto that track, they've got lots of experience with the senior players and the coach look at that track. They'll be able to work out whether Hardik is a third seamer and then yep. having three brilliant spinners is sufficient. All right, Hardik's form certainly encourages their uh, decision-making. He's been very good so far as a bowler. Against Afghanistan, though, let's just look at how they've fared so far and what is the area that they need to improve on after losing by 104 runs to the hosts West Indies at St. Lucia in their last group game. Both had qualified by then, but they got 180 against Uganda. They got a very good 159 against New Zealand, who they blew away for then uh, 75. And uh, they chased down 95 with reasonable ease against Papua New Guinea. In most of those games, we saw one of Gurbaz or Zadran get a score and we didn't in that last game. Are they overly dependent on the top two? They are. I mean, they certainly need a good start. Uh, we have seen that Afghanistan, whenever these two batters have got off uh, Afghanistan to a good start, then uh, the rest of the batters sort of know how to go about building their uh, 20 overs. If they lose early wickets, that's when uh, the Asmatullah, Omar Zai, when he gets pushed up, mm. uh, that becomes a bit of a challenge for the Afghan batsmen. Uh, so yes, India will certainly look to break that opening partnership. If they can get them early, then I think India can certainly, if they're bowling first, they can certainly restrict. If they're chasing, then these two batters become, the, they certainly hold the key for Afghanistan. The start the get. And they've done that. They got that against New Zealand. They got that against uh, the other teams. Whenever they've done that, yeah. they've uh, gone on to go get a good score. What's the messaging for a team that perhaps knows themselves that they need their top two to fire? Andy, the likes of Gulbadi, Najibullah, Nabi, uh, Azmat, they're not quite carrying their weight with the bats. So how would you try and change that if you're Afghanistan? Well, I think one thing I wouldn't do is ask those opening batsmen to be uh, uh, more conservative. I think Gurbaz, his best method is to attack. He's got a brilliant array of attacking shots. He uh, hits the seamers over the top on the on the offside, hits them back over their head, and he can get inside uh, pull and hook shots. Um, Ibrahim Zadran's slightly different, probably a little a little. He's very good technically, um, and he's probably a more solid type of batsman, um, and will play at a tempo just below that of which Gurbaz plays. But I think they should attack in power play. They have to. They have to put um, the Indian seamers on the back foot while that ball is new and hard and trust that they get through power play. One of them gets through power play. Playing conservatively is not something I think that will work against India. You know, India's got too many batting resources to chase down smallish totals. So um, I'd be encouraging attack up front. And then that middle order has to pull their weight, you know. They've got to accept the responsibility that they've got to do their job. All right, let's get into on that note two key battles that Anil and Andy think could decide the outcome of this match. Faruqi is in great form. India will have different conditions to adapt to. We'll see a lot of spin. Andy, pick your key battle that you're most looking forward to that you think could have heavy influence on the outcome. Well, you've, you've just alluded to the, the battle that I'm really interested in seeing, and that's Faruqi against Rohit Sharma and Virat Kohli. Uh, there, certainly uh, Rohit's been knocked over by left arm uh, swing bowling um, in the past and Faruqi is a very good left arm swing bowler. He gets it to move both ways. He can get it darting into that front pad and Rohit might pick him up a couple of times but he might miss it as well. Um, but also he can get, uh, Faruqi can get the ball to go away from the right handers. And Saurabh Netrabalka got uh, Virat like that uh, in the USA game in New York.
York. And we've seen Rohit get out like that a few times in the recent IPL season. So that is a really interesting matchup. Uh, whether it's the key matchup of the game is another thing altogether because that Indian bowling attack against the, the two Afghan openers is, a, is also going to be key to the outcome of All this right. game. Anil Kumble? Yeah, for me, I think it's going to be Bumrah. Bumrah against two openers. Uh, you know, uh, Rohit will have to bring on Bumrah early. You don't want someone like uh, Zadran and uh, Gurbaz mm -hmm. to sort of settle in in the first couple of overs because uh, we have seen generally Rohit uses Bumrah in the third or the fourth over and then uses two overs in the first six. Uh, but against Afghanistan, since these two sort of are the key, you may want to introduce uh, Bumrah if not in the first at least in the second over. Is that hand also played by the fact that they might pick the extra spinner instead of uh, Siraj? Yeah, or will we do. see Hardik Kokshar bowl with the new ball? Yeah, they could. I mean, they could do that. I don't see a spinner opening the bowling against Afghanistan. Sure. You would still want Arshdeep because he's been getting wickets in the hmm. with the new ball uh, up front. So you would want uh, or expect Arshdeep to get the ball back into uh, Gurbaz. Uh, and then, you know, you would ideally want a Bumrah to follow through because uh, yeah, if you like, I said, if you get these two guys out early, uh, the Afghanistan batsmen haven't really spent much time, uh, you know, losing two wickets early and then building, rebuilding that phase, and and that's where I think India needs to catch them, sure. uh, rather than give them off, sure. get them off to a good start. Then India may uh, be a little bit under pressure. So, Bumrah with the new ball for you. Very well. Let's do a prediction. India still overwhelming favourites. Favourites, close game? No, it'll be a close game. Okay. I think you can't take Afghanistan lightly. Uh, they've come, they've run in close uh, with India a couple of times, but they've never beaten India. Yeah. So I would still go with India beating Afghanistan. They came as close as they could have last time they played, went to a super over in Bengaluru. Andy Flower, they're a threat, but India still favourites? Uh, played seven. India, India's won all seven against Afghanistan. So. Um, any betting man is going to put all their butts on India. All right. Friendly bets only. Thank you very much. Andy <laughs> Flower, Anil Kumble. India, Afghanistan is India and Afghanistan's first Super 8 clash at Barbados. And this was our preview to it on Maruti Suzuki Arena Presents. ESPN Rick and Ford Timeout, powered by Dish TV Watcho. Introducing the epic new Swift. Time to go Swifting. Watcho app, you can see all the OTT OTT shots. Watch out.